Hello, and welcome to the National Credit Union Administration's production of the CDFI Fund Small Dollar Loan Program for Credit Union Applicants. I apologize for us starting a little bit late. Uh, technical difficulties would not allow us to start on time, but we're here and we're delighted that you joined us. This webinar is jointly hosted by the National Credit Union Administration and the U.S. Department of the Treasury Community Development Financial Institutions Fund, the CDFI Fund. I am Pamela Williams, Program Manager for Minority Depository Institutions in the NCUA's Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion, and I'm your moderator for today. Before our official welcome and opening remarks, I have a few administrative tasks. First, adjust the volume on your computer as needed for your level of comfort. Second, drag the bottom right corner of your slide view to adjust the size of the slides. Third, allow pop-ups. Fourth, click the ask a question icon on the left corner of your console window or it may say submit a question when you want to submit a question for the Q&A session. And then finally, in three weeks, a closed caption archive will be available in our learning management system on the NCUA website at this address. Next is the NCUA disclaimer, which I will read. The materials presented in this webinar are intended as an informative and educational summary of general small dollar loan program information. The NCUA has taken reasonable measures to ensure the quality of the data and other information provided by the NCUA that is available in this presentation. The NCUA, however, makes no warranty, express or implied, nor assumes any legal liability or responsibility for the accuracy, correctness, or completeness of any information that is available through this presentation, nor represents that its use would not infringe on privately owned rights. The slides are intended for educational and discussion purposes and do not constitute legal advice nor replace independent professional judgment. Reference to any specific commercial product, process or service by trade name, trademark, manufacturer or otherwise does not constitute an endorsement, recommendation or favoring by the US government or the NCUA. And before I turn for our opening remarks, I'm going to ask that all of the presenters please mute your microphones until you are ready to present. And with that, we will have opening remarks by Martha Nenichuk, Director of the NCUA's Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion. Martha, are you on our line? Yes, Pam, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Oh, wonderful. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I really would like to thank you for participating in today's webinar. Uh, the Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion mission is to assist all credit unions with their strategic growth strategies. CURE incorporates regulatory support, such as chartering, field of membership expansion requests, and NCUA's low-income designation. We uh, actually provide resources in addition to support credit union growth strategy, strategies and they include free training available through our learning management system. Our credit unions will find courses that address specific challenges faced by credit unions and webinar recordings such as the one we are holding today. I'd also like to announce that our community development revolving loan grant program is now open. Low-income designated credit unions may complete an application for specific grant initiatives such as digital services and cybersecurity, underserved outreach, and the Minority Depository Institution Mentoring Grant. 
this grant is to use or offer funds to form partnerships with other credit unions to help MDIs build and strengthen internal capacity, develop products and services that increase the wealth of minority members and minority owned businesses. The maximum grant amount you can receive for this particular initiative is $25,000. Please visit our website to obtain additional resource and support information. This brings me to today's webinar topic, the CDFI Fund Small Dollar Loan Program, which represents an opportunity for credit unions. Credit unions offering a small dollar loan program provides assistance to members experiencing revenue gaps and costs associated with unforeseen expenses. This webinar will provide information on re resources that are available to support small dollar loan programs. I would also like to thank the CDFI Fund for agreeing to co-host this webinar. NCUA really appreciates the longstanding partnership and working relationship we have with the CDFI Fund. And at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to Pam Williams. Thank you, Martha. The next slide shows the agenda for this webinar. We've had our welcome and opening remarks. And next, we will go to the Small Dollar Loan Program presentation by members of the CDFI Fund staff. We have joining us today, Tanya McInnes, Program Manager for the Depository Institutions Initiative Program with the CDFI Fund, and also Julie Sandler, Senior Management and Program Analyst. Following the CDFI Fund presentation, we will have an NCUA presentation on regulatory considerations. That will be presented by Al Brantley, who is a program officer in the NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection. At, in the um, speaker list window, you'll find biographies for all of the presenters. And just as a reminder, Throughout the presentation, you may submit a question in the field below the slides on your view, or you may click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your console. So before we start with the CDFI Funds presentation, we have a poll question. And the question is, is your credit union currently certified as a CDFI? The options are yes, no, or if you don't represent a credit union, indicate the third response, non-applicable. So we'll give a, a couple moments for people to enter your responses and then we will see who we have joining us in our audience today. I know that as of, the, um, as of May 18, there were th um, over 300 credit unions that were CDFI certified. So we'll see how many of them might be joining us today. All right, with 48%, um, looks like we have an overwhelming um, number of our audience are CDFI certified credit unions, followed by a fair number of credit unions that are not CDFI certified, and a few, I'm guessing, um, members from the um, CDFI or from the credit union industry that are not associated with a particular credit union. We hope that all of you will benefit from the presentation today. And so at this time, I would like to introduce Tanya McInnes, who is going to lead the CDFI, uh, the CDFI funds presentation on the small dollar loan program. Tanya? Great, thank you, Pam, and thank you, Martha, um, for the introduction and for hosting this webinar. Um, as Martha said, uh, the CFI Fund and NCOA have a longstanding relationship and partnership on a number, number of initiatives um, to better serve the membership. So I am um, very enthusiastic um, about this webinar, webinar and um, the Small Daughters Loan Program. As, my, as Pam said, um, my name is Tony McGinnis. I am the program manager for uh, Depository Institutions Initiatives, which is a business unit within the CDFI fund that manages the small dollar loan program. 
Our agenda for this webinar includes the following, an introduction of the SDL program staff, a quick overview of the CDFI fund, and then we're gonna jump in and, and talk about the small dollar loan program, give you an overview of the program, as well as application logistics and an application overview, and then we'll share some important reminders and contact information with you. So the SDL program staff is a staff of three. Um, in addition to uh, working with me on the program is Julie Sandler. Julie joined us a few weeks ago. Uh, she's new to the team and we're very excited to have her um, um, on the team with us. And um, as Pam said, Julie is our senior management and program analyst. Uh, John Reed Patrick is um, also on the team. She is our policy and program officer. And Bridget Ware is on a part-time detail with us. You'll, you'll hear um, from Julie Sandler in a few moments. So a little bit about the CDFI Fund. Our mission is to expand economic opportunity for underserved people and communities by supporting the growth and capacity of a national network of community development lenders, investors, and financial service providers. We accomplish our mission through a, a number of programs, and the one that I'm going to talk about today is um, our newest program, the Small Dollar Loan Program. It was authorized by Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protect Protection Act of 2010. We have up to $13.5 million available for this run funding round. The program was created to help certified CDFIs address the issue of expanding consumer access to mainstream financial institutions and provide alternatives to high cost small dollar loans and to also help the unbanked and underbanked populations build credit access affordable capital, and allow greater access into the mainstream financial system. Program eligibility includes the following. So per the statute that governs the program, small dollar loan program grants may only be used to support new and existing small dollar loan programs that offer loans to consumers that are made in, in amounts that do not exceed $2,500, must be repaid in installments, have no prepayment penalty, and have payments that are reported to at least one of the consumer reporting agencies. Next slide, Pam. Per the statute, there are two eligible uses of awards. They include loan loss reserves to defray the cost of starting a new small dollar loan program or expanding an existing small dollar loan program, or you can use the award for technical assistance, for technology, staff support, and other costs associated with establishing a new small dollar loan program or expanding an existing small dollar loan program. Please note that the Grants cannot be used to provide direct loans to consumers. We've established the following minimum and maximum award amounts for the, the two award types. For TA, you can um, request, and if you're selected, receive an, an award, TA award. Those um, sizes will range between $10,000 and $150,000. And then for loan loss reserve awards, um, you, you will be awarded up to or can be awarded up to 20% of your projected three-year to be closed small dollar loan, not to exceed $350,000. You can also apply to receive a combination, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next slide, of um, a TA award and a loan loss reserve award. Again, per the statute, there are three types of eligible applicants. You can apply individually as a certified CDFI, or you can apply as a partnership between a certified CDFI 
in a federally insured depository institution, what we call a FIDI, that has a primary mission to serve targeted investment areas. And then the third eligible applicant type is a partnership between two or more certified CDFIs. The statute further states that eligible applicants are limited to um, the following types of, of awards. So for the loan loss reserve grants, eligible applicant types include certified CDFIs applying individually or a partnership between a certified CDFI and a FIDI. For those that um, are interested in a TA a grant, um, eligible applicant types include certified CDFIs applying individually or a partnership between two or more certified CDFIs. And then those that are inter interested in both a loan loss reserve grant and a TA grant, the eligible applicant type is just certified CDFIs applying individually. The program has established pro uh, prohibitive practices um, and if, which means that our awards um, will not be used for small dollar loan programs or products with any of the following lending um, practices and loan characteristics. And these practices are, are, are further described in the NOFA. They include high rate loans. Again, these are lending practices and loan characteristics that our awards will not support. High rate loans, coerced, automatic loan payments, excessive refinancing, automatic loan insurance or credit card add-ons, security interest in these items listed here, excessive late fees on missed loan payments, abuses overdraft practices, aggressive debt collection practices, enforced arbitration clause, and class action bans. We've established priorities um, for our program in which we will prioritize funding for applicants that propose to offer um, any of the characteristics listed here. And they include um, loan terms that are at least 90 days. If you use the ability to repay underwriting that considers the borrower's ability to repay a loan based on both the borrower's income and expenses, if loan decisions are made within one business day after receiving all required documents, if you offer a reduction in the borrower's loan rate, if the borrower elects to use automatic date debit payments, if you offer automatic savings features that are built into the regularly scheduled payment, um, assuming that those payments are still affordable, and if you offer access to financial education and credit counseling. Again, we, we, we um, consider these to be um, priorities um, and applications will be viewed more favorably if those priorities are selected. With respect to the application evaluation, the C5 Fund will evaluate applications based on the following. We will um, use the application assessment tool, also known as AAT, for those who have applied for um, a C5 program FA or TA grant, you should, feel, you should be familiar with this analysis. We will also um, review your, your business strategy um, as well as your community impact um, proposals, which will include an analysis of the community need and financing gaps, the proposed use of the award, the um, affordable and responsible loan characteristics and lending practices that I just listed. We'll also review your track record, your growth, and projections. So based on this analysis, applicants will receive a low risk, medium risk, or high risk score. And applicants that receive a, a rating of high risk will not receive further consideration for an award. And award sizes will be based on the following, which will include the final due diligence review of reviewing the management team and key staff, reviewing the performance, the history of performance in managing federal awards in any audit or regulated findings. Of course, we'll look at your requested loan amount, your projected three-year um, small dollar loan um, activity, 
although this, uh, although this, the, the program, um, you, you applicants are not required to, um, are not subject to the 10% um, commitment, um, all of the, all of the CD5 funds programs are subject to the 10% um, statutory requirement. So award sizes um, will be adjusted if needed to award funds to applicants that are located in PPC. So, so again, you, you will not need to make a commitment in your application, but, um, but we will be looking to see if needed um, where the applicants are located and prioritize the applications that see. And then we'll all say about that, everyone. Uh, just wanted to cover, I'm Julie Sandler, Tanya and a couple of us got knocked off, but we are right back on. So once the award is made, um, everyone will, the awardees will receive the assistance agreement um, and you will enter into this agreement and receive payment. Uh, each award has a three year period of performance and the assistance agreement will identify the terms and conditions the amount of the award, profuses, performance goals and measures, and the reporting requirements. Next slide, please. So um, I just want to get started. How do we submit this application? What should we be thinking about? So I'll present an overview of the systems that you will be using. The main thing that I want to highlight, though, um, for the application submission process is that Tomorrow is the deadline for submitting your SF-424 form via grants.gov. So in order to apply for a small dollar loan program award, applicants must have a valid DUNS and EIN number. By tomorrow, applicants should ensure that the correct EIN and DUNS numbers are updated in all the applicable accounts. That would be SAM.gov, grants.gov, and EMIS. If the EIN and DUNS number in an applicant's EMIS accounts do not match the EIN and DUNS, in its SAM account, the CDFI fund will reject the application. So the CDFI fund does not manage grants.gov or SAM.gov and is unable to respond to any questions related to these systems. Therefore, questions related to SAM.gov registration or submission process uh, should be communicated directly to them. And their contact information can be found on their website and we also have some um, information at the end of this part of the presentation. The SF424 is the only document that is submitted via grants.gov and must be submitted by tomorrow. Uh, so between now and tomorrow, please just ensure your accounts are up to date and have the correct information and you will be able to submit your SF424. Then we have application guidance that walks you through how to complete the form. Next page. Now I want to spend a few minutes talking about the application. On our website, you can find application instructions to review the questions, as well as technical guidance and more. The main application will be located within AMIS where you will complete it. The main parts of the application are outlined here, organizational questions, some of which are pre-populated, which you should review, the executive summary, and then part one, the business strategy, community index section. So this section, as Tanya kind of mentioned before, We'll cover the community analysis where you would just discuss what are the small dollar financing gaps you see in your community, what, how you will use and plan for the award. As Tanya noted, we want to understand what loan characteristics and lending practices your small dollar loan program offers and what are the expected impacts that will result from your program. We want to understand what is your plan for launching or expanding your small dollar loan program along with the track record and projection. Next page. Um, and this is the second part of the application. This is really where we review the key personnel who are reviewing, um, who are working on the SDL program, um, as well as previous CD5 funded boards. So we just sort of a note box for an understanding of how we will review this information and the application guidance to complete these sections. Next page. So to recap, to submit an application, there's part one, the standard form SF424 via grants.gov. Um, that is due tomorrow. And then part two is the SDL program, program application, which is submitted via ANIS 
and that is due on June 29th. Next page. Um, just a couple of important reminders here. Um, you can refer back to them later, but essentially, um, please just use the official application templates when submitting, um, and only one application submitted is allowed via ANIS. Next page. Um, and here we have a highlight of our key deadlines, including what are the last days to reach out to both our help desk and for IT, and obviously the big dates of May 28th and June 29th. Next page. We've shared a lot of information with you in a short period of time. If after digesting this information, you have follow-up questions, this plays with who and where to reach out for um, different questions. We also have a version of this presentation that is posted on our website for you to listen to further. Uh, and with that, I will pass it back on to Pam. Thank you so much, Julie. And audience, we appreciate your patience and indulgence through our technical challenges and hope that you will still find the material presented by the CDFI Fund and the NCUA helpful. So if, as we move to the next segment of the um, webinar for today, we have another poll question. Does your credit union currently have a small dollar loan program in place? Answer yes, no, or if you do not represent a credit union, answer not applicable. So we'll give you a moment um, to answer those questions, and then we'll see again um, who's in our audience in terms of how um, they are along the spectrum of implementing a small dollar loan program. Let's see. Interesting. So this time we have about 45% of the audience has not does not have a small dollar loan program in place yet almost um 35 percent of the audience does have a, a such a program in place and then 20 percent um does not represent a credit union so with that in mind then the next segment our regulatory considerations presented by al brantley should be of most interest to those of you who are contemplating or already have a small dollar loan program in place. Al, welcome. Thank you, Pam. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me advance the slide here. Uh, my name is Al Brantley. I serve as a program officer in NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection. In my portion of today's webinar, we want to first define some common terms for short-term lending, then survey the legal and regulatory framework applicable to consumer lending. We'll explore a host of factors to consider in implementing a small dollar loan program using the CDFI Fund's small dollar loan program structure, coupled with NCUA's expectations for federal credit unions. Then we'll take a high-level look at some uh, lending principles for offering responsible small dollar loans, and also update you on resources that are available for short-term lending options and how you can obtain uh, assistance from our office. Credit unions have a long history of offering low-cost small dollar alternatives to their members. Uh, any short-term lending program should be designed to try to help members end the reliance on payday loans and guide members toward the credit union's more mainstream low-cost financial products and services, including financial counseling. A credit union's board of directors is ultimately responsible for articulating loan policy, underwriting standards, and the degree of risk the credit union is willing to take in its various loan programs. The term payday loan generally refers to a small dollar short-term loan a borrower promises to repay from their next paycheck or salary deposit. But historically, these loans have often been made by lenders who charge high fees and may engage in predatory lending practices. For many, the term payday loan carries a negative connotation. A payday alternative loan, or PAL, is a more affordable small dollar loan with a longer repayment term, though other restrictions do apply and availability is limited to federal credit unions. NCUA created PAL loans in 2010 through its official regulations. A small dollar loan is a short-term unsecured obligation with a small principal amount, and for federal credit unions, 
subject to the non-PAL provisions in NCOA's consumer loan rule. A credit builder loan typically holds the amount borrowed in a savings account while the borrower makes payments, thus building savings and credit at the same time. Loan payments are reported to at least one credit bureau. This product is generally designed to help consumers who have little or no established credit history, but have enough income to make the payments. A marker loan is generally a small unsecured personal loan to help borrowers regain their financial footing. This product is often promoted to help vehicle for vehicle repairs, education costs, or debt consolidation. In July 2020, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or CFPB, issued a final rule commonly known as the Payday Lending Rule. It covers short-term loans that require repayment within 45 days of consummation. Alternative loans that generally conform to NCOA's requirements for PALS once loans, even if the lender is not a federal credit union, and accommodation loans that require the lender to limit the number of originations and the amount of earnings derived from these types of loans. Despite many terms and definitions, they, they all share some commonality, and in practice, a few terms will overlap. As with any loan you make, a short-term loan must comply with applicable consumer financial protection laws and regulations. Federal credit unions also must comply with the Federal Credit Union Act and NCOA's lending regulation. This slide shows the various laws and regulations that may apply to your loan programs. We've also provided the listing as a separate resource. All insured credit unions must comply with the Fair Lending Standards and Regulation B and provide notices of action taken on loan applications. You must provide accurate truth and lending disclosures to your borrowers. Failing to calculate and disclose finance charges and annual percentage rates accurately can result in having to pay restitution to wronged borrowers. If you establish a loan program where you open a deposit account for each borrower, deposit loan proceeds into the account and issue an access card to the borrower to debit the funds, you may be subject to the terms described in Regulation E and Part 707 of NCOA's regulations. If you furnish information about your members to one or more consumer reporting agencies, or CRAs, the Fair Credit Reporting Act and Regulation V require you to establish and implement reasonable written policies and procedures regarding the accuracy and integrity of member information. The Federal Credit Union Act and NCOA's lending rule or, or regulation uh, imposes a ceiling on the interest rate a federal credit union may charge for credit. For non-payday alternative loans, the interest rate cap is currently 18% per year on the unpaid balance, inclusive of all finance charges. One additional consideration with respect to the legal framework is, if, if your credit union provides consumer credit to active duty service members their family members or dependents, you will likely have to comply with the final rule issued by the Department of Defense to implement the Military Lending Act. The final rule is codified in 32 CFR Part 232. In this segment, we'll look at some various factors that should be considered before implementing a small dollar loan program. Your pre-program assessment should start with business strategy. What are the needs of consumers and communities in your service area? What types of credit products are your members asking for to meet their short-term financial needs or immediate circumstances? How do you plan to address these needs and to what extent? What impact to the community are you seeking? For example, improve financial strength and stability for low-income and underserved people improve borrower delinquency rates, credit histories, credit scores, access to mainstream financial products and services. What are your projected small dollar lending activities and track record? In assessing your technical strengths and weaknesses, consider what are your current staffing arrangements and plans to fill vacancies? What are your underwriting and loan approval processes? How effective is your loan collections program? What is your readiness for implementing the new current expected credit losses or a CECL accounting standard? It becomes effective for federally insured credit unions on January 1st, 2023. 
You should also be keenly aware of the CDFI fund small dollar loan program conditions. The key components are listed on this slide. If you're affiliated with the Federal Credit Union, you must also consider NCUA's restrictions on small dollar loans, specifically the product features and policy requirements for PALS 1 and PALS 2 loans, and the interest rate limitation for non-PALS small dollar loans. Many of the CDFI fund's preferred loan characteristics reflect those urged by NCUA for Federal Credit Unions that offer PALS loans. Specifically, use basic underwriting practices, encourage payroll deduction, offer a savings component, report borrowers' payments to credit reporting agencies, and offer access to financial education. Underwriting standards should account for a member's need for quickly available funds while adhering to principles of responsible lending. Let's now look at some program management deliberations. Consumer financial protection is a vital element of the credit union mission. Weaknesses in a credit union's compliance management system, or CMS, may lead to violations or other compliance issues. Whether formally defined or not, a credit union's CMS is an integrated risk management system of written documents, processes, tools, controls, and functions to ensure the institution complies with applicable laws and regulations. It also helps credit unions better address training, communication, monitoring, and self-correction. Compliance expectations also extend to third-party relationships. If a credit union outsources the operational aspects of a product or service, the credit union cannot abdicate its responsibility for complying with the law or managing the risk associated with third-party relationships. If you are a certified CDFI credit union, you may wish to partner with another eligible entity to serve underbanked and unbanked communities. A few organizations providing best practices guidance include Center for Financial Services Innovation, Center for Responsible Lending, the Pew Charitable Trust, Federal Reserve Board, and NCUA. The evaluation criteria for measuring success consists of outcomes, outputs, barriers, and metrics. What do you, uh, what do you want to accomplish? List your desired outcomes, for example, member satisfaction, member loyalty and retention, increase in member accounts, loan growth, financial innovation, financial inclusion. How will you know if you're successful? List your desired outputs. For example, members are reassured, temporary or emergency financing needs are met, use of payday lenders is deterred. What hurdles might, you, uh, would, might your credit union prevent movement or expansion? List the barriers that must be addressed or overcome. For example, elevated delinquency and net charge off ratios, constrained capital and low net worth, staffing limitations, deficient compliance management system, what benchmarks will you set for key performance indicators, specifically delinquency, net charge-offs, loan growth, and return on average assets? Last year, NCUA collaborated with other financial uh, banking agencies to develop and release principles for responsible small dollar loans. Those general principles apply to all credit unions that make or want to make small dollar loans. Small dollar loans offered responsibly can help your members meet their temporary cash flow needs as well as trans uh, make transitions into the mainstream financial products. So let's take a high level look at some of the interagency uh, guidance that, uh, that describes prudent lending principles when you're offering small dollar loan programs. Responsible small dollar loan programs generally reflect certain characteristics. They show a high percentage of borrowers successfully repaying their loans according to original loan terms. They reflect repayment terms, pricing, and safeguards that minimize adverse borrower outcomes. And they have repayment outcomes and program structures that enhance a borrower's financial capabilities. Credit unions seeking to develop new programs or expanding expand existing ones should do so in a manner consistent with sound risk management principles, inclusive of appropriate policies. 
Core lending principles include loan products that are consistent with safe and sound practices, treat your members fairly, and comply with applicable laws and regulations. Effectively manage risks associated with the products. Effective management of credit, operational, and compliance risk facilitate the clear disclosure of terms, the use of new technologies, the use of alternative underwriting information, or the use of third-party arrangements. Core principles also include underwriting practices based on prudent policies and procedures governing the amounts borrowed, the frequency of borrowing, and the repayment requirements. Your loan policies and risk management practices and controls would generally address the factors listed on this slide. Product structures that support borrower affordability and successful repayment of principal, interest, and fees in a reasonable time frame. Loan amounts and repayment terms that align with eligibility and underwriting criteria and that promote fair treatment and credit access of applicants. Loan, pr loan pricing that complies with applicable federal or state laws and reflects overall returns reasonably related to your product risks and costs. Credit analysis that uses internal and or external data sources such as deposit account activity to assess the member's credit worthiness and to effectively manage credit risk. Marketing and member disclosures that comply with consumer protection laws and regulations and provide information in a clear, conspicuous, accurate, and member-friendly member manner. Processes that assist your members in achieving successful repayment while avoiding continuous cycles of debt and significant credit costs due to rollover or reborrowing. Well-managed small dollar loan programs will generally align with the credit union's overall business plans and strategies. Your programs could include effectively managed deployment of innovative technology or processes for members who may not meet the credit union's traditional underwriting standards. Such programs can be implemented in-house or through effectively managed third-party relationships. In all programs, responsible lending products are offered in a manner that ensures fair access to financial services, fair treatment of applicants, and compliance with applicable laws and regulations. Think of, res of responsible small dollar short-term lending as a means to enhance your credit union's reputation. See it as an opportunity to help low and moderate income households in particular. This slide shows several resources available to assist you and your credit union. We've also, excuse me there, let me go back. Oops. Uh, so th th on this slide, we have available resources to assist you. We've also included a summary in the resources list window. Not sure why that's, anyway. But anyway, feel free to contact NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection with any questions you have concerning the topics that I've covered today. Uh, this concludes my portion of the webinar, so I'm going to yield the mic back to Pam. At this time, I see that we're just a, a minute or two remaining in the webinar, and so I want to respect the audience schedule. We appreciate your participation with us, and, and again, your, our, my apologies for the technical difficulties. This next slide gives you um, contact information for NCUA staff here for the number of credit unions that reported that they do not have CDFI certification, I would encourage you to use the CDFI certification information um, here on, on this slide to contact our office to find out more about the NCUA CDFI certification program. We do offer a streamlined process for qualifying low-income designated um, credit unions, so that might be an easier way for you to achieve certification. Um, and with that, I would like to conclude also by reminding you that the archive and recording of this webinar will be posted to the NCUA's learning management system in approximately three weeks. In addition to the archive of the of, of video um, we of the webinar, we will also post responses to all of the questions that we were unable to address during this live session. Thank you for everyone for your patience. Um, thank you, Tanya, and to the CDF5 team for working with us in this joint interagency effort. Thank you to our technical support staff and all the NCUA staff who also participated. Have a good afternoon and goodbye.